if this is going to be what XRP is going to be, if this is the model and XRP is that renminbi currency, then I would imagine that that would it would be in the likes of gold. Some of these cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies are being introduced as a result of a variation of the Chinese currency system. So like thinking about, and I'm going I'm to add some blockchain language to this to kind of give you an idea of what this could look like and how this operation with Ripple using the stable coin um, can fit and maybe some of the challenges or risk that are going to be associated with it because of this two currency model. All right. So What's up, y'all? Welcome back to Urban Fintech at the G-Spot Studios channel, where we try to make finance and technology sexy. I'm your girl, G. And today we're going to talk about a few things. Um, there is a correlation, I think, between the Chinese financial infrastructure and Tether stablecoin, as well as how it relates to Ripple's XRP. Let's dive in. I want to just tackle and show some of these similarities, um, some of these things that are kind of intermingled and see what you all think. So listen, y'all, Ripple is out here, got folks confused, not understanding what's going on. They have a bunch of stuff going on with the SEC, with the lawsuit, but <clears throat> they just announced that they were going to and using the Tether token. So they're going to use Tether as a means to do transactions locally. So in the United States, they want to and are being forced to use a stable coin. And so they chose to use Tether in the meantime, um, because prior to that, we know that they had announced that they would be launching their own stable coin. So part of the question for me is, you know, now that they're going to be using Tether, for the moment, just so that they can be in compliance, will they continue to use it? And will will they, um, you know, purchase the rights for it or, or whatnot and use it um, as a means of them to sort of reinventing the wheel? Because if it's working, it's working. And I know there's mixed feelings around it because you have some people who are like, just Tether is a scam. It's a sham. They just got too much shady business going on. And, you know, I've, I, I got the receipts. I've, I've done my homework. And so I'm going to share with you a bit about what I've discovered about Tether, just kind of their history, a timeline, um, who they're connected with and how that's connected to other countries and the Bitcoin and Lightning Network. I mean, it's just a whole rabbit hole. And at the end of it, like, I still don't know what the hell is going on. So hopefully somebody in the comments can help me out. But as you see here, Tether, a stable coin pegged to the US dollar. ODL remains compliant while mineralizing disruption. So that is why Ripple decided to um, switch its XRP customers to Tether. But um, let's go ahead and look at this other little piece over here that I found um, on Wikipedia, kind of about like what Tether is and what they've done over the past few um, years. I'm trying to get this little pop-up out the way, so I apologize. But um, <clears throat> so taking it back here to around 2019 to present, there's just a whole timeline of stuff that happened for Tether. So they surpassed Bitcoin in 2019 at one point in trading volume in 2021 in July. They were tied to half of all of the Bitcoin trades that were taking place. In May of 22, Tether launched its MXNT token, which is pegged to Mexico's peso. So Tether is making moves. They're in Latin America doing um, some testing. That's the testing ground, as you see there. Um, in 2022 as well, they remain pretty strong during a time when several once reputable companies and crypto and banking collapsed. So you might remember, I, I believe this was the start of the Luna collapse, because I'm not sure if that was 2022 or the end of 22 and into the beginning of 23. Um, in October of 23, uh, it says this uh, person who is the chief technology officer for Tether was promoted to CEO. His name is Paulo Ardonio. He will lead the company starting in December of 23. So he's already been there. He's there now. And he's succeeding their previous um, CEO, Jean-Louis Vandervelde. So in October of 23, the Wall Street Journal reported that Tether had been increasingly showing up in investigations tied to money laundering. 
So I think that's where a lot of people have this thing about it being a scam and a sham. And it says that they were, you know, tied to terrorist financing and sanction invasions. Um, the report also alleged that Tether appears to have been used in financing Hamas and paying Chinese fentanyl suppliers and funding the North Korean nuclear program, as well as buying sanctioned Venezuelan oil for sanctioned Russian oligarchs. So in response, the company published a blog denying it, saying it was inadequate, inadequate, excuse me, um, and that they have aided governments with criminal investigations, um, which helped to freeze $835 million in assets that were linked to theft. So they've actually assisted um, when, when there may have been issues of fraud or different things going on. And mind you, with any type of currency, that's commonplace. So this is not just um, isolated or specific to cryptocurrency. So in May in 23, Tether announced plans to establish a Bitcoin mining operation, operation in Uruguay. So they're tied to Uruguay. They're going to be using renewable energy and investing in resources that use renewable energy production. And Uruguay currently uses about 98% of its electricity output in renewable energy sources. So that's awesome. In June of 23, Tether Operations Limited held meetings with governmental structures and signed a memorandum with the government of Georgia. So they're in Georgia. In November 23, Tether announced that it plans to invest about half a billion dollars over the next six months to become one of the world's top Bitcoin miners. So let's see, November, December, January, February, March, April. So by next month, we should see how that looks for Tether, which to me would be very strategic um, for Ripple to um, use it because it looks like they're going to be doing some heavy Bitcoin stuff. Um, so again, we have to pay attention to all of the information out here so that we can make informed decisions. So that investment includes part of a $610 million credit facility that Tether had extended to publicly traded Bitcoin mining company, Northern Data AG. Um, and they had acquired shares in the Frankfurt-based firm in September. So it sounds like they got some ties to Germany there. In December of 23, Luguano, Switzerland, started to accept cryptocurrencies, including Tether stablecoin, for paying taxes, for paying fines, and all other invoices. So Switzerland is at the table, and the Switzerland is a major heavy hitter. In February 24, Tether announced the establishment of Tether EDU, an education division focused on teaching skills in blockchain and other digital technologies. Tether EDU will focus on Africa and um, Latin America, the Middle East, Europe, and the Commonwealth of Independent States, as well as Asia. So the program will be tailored to cover topics such as design, artificial intelligence, and coding. So just really prepping the world for what's to come with this new digital age. And so right here, um, looking at like who owns Tether, like who's running the show, Tether is owned by a company called iFinex, which is registered in Hong Kong. So it's registered in China. So again, China's at the table. And um, iFinex also owns the crypto exchange, Bitfinex. So very interesting, right? So let's look at Bitfinex a little bit because this is the cryptocurrency place. And let's see, it's the cryptocurrency exchange owned and operated by iFinex Inc. and is registered in the British Virgin Islands. So this one is actually registered in the British Virgin Islands, but that, that is interesting, right? So looking at Bitfinex, so the British Virgin Islands, so what is that? That is the um, dollar. I don't know what their currency is. Sorry for the ignorance. So Bitfinex, these are the utilities that they provide. It went back up. Useful tools for optimizing trading. So lots of stuff. But look here, the Lightning Network. So to ensure you never miss a trading opportunity, Bitfinex utilizes the Lightning Network for faster deposits and withdrawals. And we all know what the Lightning Network is, right? That is the network that they use on the Bitcoin blockchain. So the Lightning Network is a layer two payment protocol built on the Bitcoin blockchain and 
those of other cryptocurrencies. It is intended to enable fast transactions among participating nodes. Um, so Lightning Network, Bitcoin, and then you got Bitfinex, you got iFinex, you got Tether, and you got Ripple. Okay, so that there's a chain and not to mention all those other countries we mentioned that Tether was dealing with Uruguay, Georgia, Switzerland. Um, okay, so let's look at what the Lightning Network is since we're talking about it about on Bitcoin. The Lightning Network explained is a secondary layer on the Bitcoin blockchain, which allows users to create payment channels where transactions can occur away from the main blockchain, but still benefit the blockchain security and decentralization. These are known as off-chain transactions. The second layer offers speed, cost savings, and scalability for the entire Bitcoin network. So it's a layer two protocol. So pretty interesting. Users, the ability to make hundreds of thousands of cheap transactions each second. So that is, that's the Lightning Network. And again, all of these things kind of co-mingle. So thinking about this connection with Ripple now using Tether and using XRP internationally, it made me really think about a system that exists in China because China if effectively just has two currencies. Let's see if I can pull this back up. So China has been using this system for quite some time. And I'm assuming that some of these cryptocurrencies and blockchain technologies are being introduced as a result of a variation of the Chinese currency system. So quick background on it, China's official currency is the renminbi or the RMB, which is often referred to also as the yuan. So there are two different names, but they're kind of interchangeable because the renminbi is what they use domestically within China, while the term yuan specifically refers to the unit of the currency. So like thinking about, and I'm going to add some blockchain language to this to kind of give you an idea of what this could look like and how this operation with Ripple using this stable coin um, can fit and maybe some of the challenges or risk that are going to be associated with it because of this two currency model. The, uh, China has gradually uh, is gradually internationalizing the RMB to promote the use in global trade and finance, and so that's something that we see Ripple also doing. Um, so again, the RMB itself is like the whole of a thing if we think of like a Bitcoin, and the yuan is a component of it. So that would be like the Satoshi, right? But then they're only using the yuan. So they're only using the Satoshi in, in at home, right? So like in the U.S., using the U.S. as an example, because I'm from the U.S., at home, we would be using um, the Satoshi, but then abroad, you know, just use the Bitcoin, right? All right. So the two currency system, China does not officially have two separate currencies. However, there are some distinct aspects to consider. So again, they consider this to be one currency. However, the way they operate is using it in a separate manner to kind of separate and hedge and avoid inflation and, and, and other kind of market upsets. So one of the way they use it is onshore. So that would be just a regular renminbi and that's what they call CNY. So that's onshore. And when they use that, that's just kind of in mainland China. So it's subject to strict capital controls by the Chinese government. Now offshore, they use what's called the CNH. And this is traded outside the mainland China, primarily in Hong Kong, but also across the free market system, so internationally as well. Um, so the existence of both onshore and offshore allows for flexibility in cross-border transactions and investments, right? So now if we think about XRP and Ripple, using Tether as a stablecoin and XRP as a token onshore, would be Tether, right? So that CNY would kind of represent Tether. Offshore, the CNH would represent XRP, okay? Because they're trying to grow that particular market. All right, so some of the benefits and challenges, trade facilitation, having an offshore, so this would be XRP, allows businesses to settle international trade transactions directly 
in XRP. We're going to use XRP interchangeably. This reduces reliance on the U.S. dollar and simplifies cross-border payments, right? Currency hedging. Companies can use XRP market to hedge against currency risk. For example, if a Chinese exporter expects the XRP to appreciate, they can lock in a favorable exchange rate using XRP. Globalization of the renminbi. So China aims to internationalize the renminbi. So in this case, it would be XRP. Um, so Ripple aims to internationalize the XRP token. If successful, it would benefit the United States or Ripple, or in this case, because it, it's, it's decentralized, it would benefit the people, I would think by reducing reliance on the US dollar and enhancing its economic influence globally. Uncertainty and fluctuations. So the dual currency system can create confusion for businesses and which is what we're going through right now, trying to figure out the stable coin thing, XRP, cross-border internet, just like, come on. So exchange rates between C and Y, which in this case would be Tether for us, and C and H, which would be XRP, can vary due to market dynamics and government interventions, whatever that means. You know, the governments, yeah, that's that that's pretty vague and wide because they can pretty much do anything, it feels like. Um, so digital currencies development. So China has also been working on a digital currency called the Digital Currency Electronic Payment, or DCEP. It aims to enhance efficiency in domestic transactions and potentially expand its use internationally. So this digital currency that China's working on, maybe that would be, you know, the equivalent to the XRP stable token that they're working on. Who knows? Um, if businesses adopt DCEP for cross-border payments, it could further boost the Remembi's global presence. So if businesses adopt the XRP stablecoin that they're going to build or use eventually for cross-border payments, it could further boost XRP's global presence. So that's how we look at that. All right, so it says in summary, China's two currency model provides flexibility for trade and investment, but it also presents challenges related to exchange rate fluctuations and understanding the differences between onshore and offshore tokens, at, or excuse me, in this case, currency. As China continues to evolve its currency strategy, the global role of the renminbi remains a topic of interest and debate. Well, apparently they've all met and got together and decided that, hey, this is kind of the model we want to follow to launch digital currency um, because I really do think that whether China and the United States are really in bed together and just, you know, giving us show and just want us to be confused or whether this model that China has been using has been thoroughly vetted and, and, um, and the, you know, the big wigs decided that this was the one that makes the most sense. I mean, China had a viable, thriving economy prior to some of these other worldly events that just kind of impacted everyone. And it makes you wonder, again, I mean, I can go down a rabbit hole with that. And I don't think I want to do that today. But I did have um, even some hints from the Simpsons with this information. So if you're interested, let me know. I'll do a separate video and kind of um, tie those things into part of that cryptocurrency frank coin episode and how it relates to Tether being the chosen one. I saw that within the Frank coin episode. I also, well, um, they mentioned the renminbi. They mentioned it next to gold and next to corn. And so anytime you mention something next to something of that stature, like gold is a, a big deal. It's one of the highest priced commodities. Um, you know, and now Bitcoin is kind of up there too, but to, to mention it next to that means that, okay, at some point this, this, this currency was doing extremely well. Um, and so if this is going to be what XRP is going to be, um, if this is the model and XRP is that renminbi currency, then I would imagine that that would, it would be in the likes of gold and, and apparently corn. Um, so 
all of y'all who haven't started yet, something maybe in the future about corn. So definitely invest <laughs> or or farming maybe. But anyway, um, I appreciate you watching my crazy kookiness. And let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you want me to do a little bit more of this with the Simpsons video. Until next time, take care.